We're going to bring in uh, my favorite guest that we have recurring on the show. He's the most electrifying uh, man in boxing, in my Take opinion. Take over. Yeah, the takeover. It's Teofimo Lopez Jr. He is the WBO and lineal junior welterweight champion. And he'll be back on ESPN June 29th in Miami, defending that WBO strap against Steve Claggett. Let's bring him in right now. There oh, he is. Yeah. The takeover <laughs> is back at it. Teo, we love chatting with you. You survived in advance against Jermaine Ortiz, and it wasn't easy. But the landscape in boxing is looking very uh, rich at the moment, and you're a big player in that. How you feeling? Great to have you back on the show, my guy. Oh, man, I'm doing great, man. And I don't know if I survived it because it was too easy in the sense of a guy not wanting to fight with me. However... I'm doing great, man. Staying on top. That's where we need to be. The king stays king. And in all gen in all generosity of everything, man, I'm looking forward to give the five fans what they're looking for. And that's just great fights, great um exhibitions in all these types of ways, and just putting on uh, entertainment for the fans out there and to all the fight fans that are watching. Okay, what can we expect from you in Miami uh, on June 29th here? Steve Claggett is a name we know. Is he in your league? Is this going? What, what do you expect? What are your expectations style-wise when you two touch gloves there in Miami? Oh, stylistically, this guy is going to, it's a come straight forward fighter. You know, throws a lot of punches. I've seen him stop a lot of fighters, you know, and this guy is number one in Canada. And on top of that, this guy's a natural 147 pounder coming to 140. And on top of that, despite his record and everything else, this guy is top 15, top 20 in my weight division. So, you know, I'm looking at fighting the best of the best, as always. We wanted those champions like the likes of Sabriel Matias, um, Isaac Cruz, and even Devin Haney at, at that one particular time. Devin had that situation with Ryan Garcia. However, the whole Austrian situation happened the way it did. But, you know, um, we wanted these guys. We wanted to fight the champions to make a unification bout. And they have their own agenda. So, you know, this is who we're facing is Steve Claggett. It's no pushover, no um, no, no slouch, really. And I know this guy is like a Rocky Balboa movie for him. So, you know, this is my moment right here to really show why I should stay on top and be number one as I am. Taylor, did I hear, maybe, correct the record, is this your last fight with top rank? Um, I believe that's Shakur Stevenson. You know, I believe oh, okay, Shakur okay. Stevenson is his last fight, July 6th. At the uh, what is it, Prudential, Prudential Center. Center? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Uh, for myself, you know, you just never know. Uh, you know, a lot of things are changing. A lot of things are are happening the way they need to. I'm just staying focused right now. You know, I told, I spoke with uh, Jeremy from Top Rank, and I spoke to a lot of the chairmen from Top Rank, and you know, we have good relationships more than ever now. You know, we having we having a lot of great communication on that end. And for me, I just told him, listen, I just want to stay active this year. Put me with whoever, anyone, I don't really care. These other guys don't want to fight me. Obviously, it is showing if you really tap into the sport of boxing and in the business um, field. So right now, you know, I'm looking at fighting three to four times this year. And so far, we're on the right course. And without any injuries, thank the Lord above. So I'm looking forward to a great night. Are, are you... Only wanting fights at 140, or would you jump around up or down weight classes depending on the opponent? Uh, if, it, if it permits, you know what I'm saying? I, my main goal at this moment to, is to have that triple crown, and that triple crown for me is Terrence Crawford. You know, um, a lot of people Ooh. laugh at that. Yeah, really. A lot of people laugh at that. A lot of people say this, oh, you're not ready, and this and that. But, like, they said the same thing for me with Josh Taylor. They also said the same thing for me for Vasily Lomachenko and for Richard Comey. So, you know, and look how those outcomes came out. I'm just someone that likes to face the best. Terrence Crawford is one of the best fighters in the world to this day, and and I know that. And that's the type of person, person really, I want to face. You know, that guy has every type of style that you could really um, adapt to, and I want to test my limits with him. How do you think his fight with Madrimov goes? I believe it goes the way it needs to go. You know, his, his this is his first fight at 154. He's moving up slowly but surely so that he could get that mega fight check with uh Saul Canelo Alvarez. You know, it's part of his um his it's part of his route and his in his way of trying to leave the game at on top, which I respect him for. 
However, you know, you got guys here closer to your weight division that are willing to face you and fight you, you know, and I believe that this is the reincarnation of Duran and Leonard, you know, 2.0. This is Teofimo Crawford will be that. So why not give the people what they really want to see? And we're much closer in weight classes. You know, um, I believe Crawford is going to do what he has to do. I believe he may stop the guy with a body shot. And uh, but this guy is no slouch as well. You know, so, you know, we're we're so hard on everybody. Everybody's so hard on us. How little do they know, though, we're facing tough, tough oppositions. Yeah, yeah. No, no fight is going to be a cakewalk. We know that. When you mention Crawford, I want to ask you, are you talking about 47 or 154? And when you're talking about, and I love that you're talking about this, that you're, you want to fight the guy who many think are the best in the world. What do you think you bring that he hasn't seen? So it's a two-part question there. Well, to start with your first question, I believe that 54 I can make for Crawford. I don't mind. I give him the upper hand. You know, he's the champion. He's the guy that is the, so, so, so quote unquote, the first two-time male undisputed champion of this era. So, you know, he has that A-side uh, resume, you know, so I'll give him that. I know where I stand. I know who I am. And um, and then to answer the second part of the question, I believe that with with Crawford and all these things, um, my speed, speed, power, IQ, I'm not even in my prime yet, which is a scary thing. And I faced a lot of those tougher oppositions younger than he did. You know, he's on his way at, what, 35, 36? Sure. You know, and, and age is nothing but a number, of course. However, it's the opposition that I did at 22, 23, 24. Now I'm 26. So so all those things ended up becoming my best asset because I faced top, top, top tier fighters, champions, undisputed champions. So for a guy like Crawford, um. I believe that I have all those things to match with him and do better. And I'm younger and prettier and handsome, you know, and uh, I love my style. I got a lot of swag to it. You're, you're a pretty handsome dude. That's what we talk about in this show all the time. Teofimo, no question. <laughs> um, look, we got to talk about the, the elephant in the boxing room, Saudi Arabia, because fans are f fired up. Their dream fights are being made. Us as journalists are going, I guess we're pretty fired up too, because our dream fights are being made. I haven't seen you get that huge bag yet, but what does a businessman like you think about what's been going on over the past few months and, and a year, really, of this takeover from Turkey Alashik and company? I mean, hey, it's very well. You know, His Excellency, you know, of Turkey, I think he's doing a great job. You know, obviously it shows. You know, you have Oscar De La Hoya now in the mix wanting to do that five versus five with top rank and um, Golden Boy promotions. So, you see a lot of things progressing in the sport. You know, everyone wants to finally get their hands involved with Turkey, which is a great thing. You know, it kind of extends the um, duration of boxing and not dying. So, you know, for him, I really appreciate that he's doing a great job with our sport. He loves the sport. Obviously, he knows who has that it factor, you know, and obviously he has his eye on me. However, things are just the way they are at the moment. I just got to keep doing my part, keep entertaining the crowd keep putting seats, keep putting butts in seats. And then from there, you know, we see where everything progresses from there. Maybe he will listen to me and have that Crawford fight happen instead of Canelo. But we'll see what happens in the near future. Teofimo, what's going to happen this weekend when Gervonta Davis is back against Frank Martin? Who wins and why? Like I said before in a previous interview, and I'll say this here on live, I believe that, listen, Frank Martin is not a slouch, and I'm not going to take that away from him and discredit everything that he's done so far to get to the fight with Javante Tank Davis. However, there is a however. There's a lot of respect there. You know, you can see it when they're talking. You can see it. And in, in, in Tank is someone that likes to get into your mind. And if he gets to your mind and those pressers and stuff like that, he's kind of winning half the battle right there. You know, I'm not going to, I know everyone is going looking away from Frank Martin. I believe that Javante has what it takes to beat him. Obviously it's, it's probably, it's more profound for him to win in an outclassing way than, than it is for Frank Martin. Um, I believe that Frank needs to really, really just bite down on that mouthpiece. And obviously if he does get hit, you know, snap around it, you know, that's a wake up call and work through it. You know, Tank is very, um, 
Tank is very lazy in there, but he's just waiting for that one good shot to really finish the fight, you know, because he has that, you know, and that's nothing bad. That's just a gift that, you know, he has. He's worked very hard for it. I believe that Tank finishes him less than six. Wow. 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 Bold prediction right there. All right. We're going to see you back. So you look at the, you know, you look at how everything looks and yeah, you kind of see it for what it is. Well, we're going to see you in Miami, June 29th, ESPN, Steve Claggett. You'll defend your title. Well, let me ask you this, because you to close, you brought up an interesting scenario in which people want Canelo to fight Benavidez, but it seems like he won't. So then people want him to fight Crawford, and it kind of seems like he won't, and you're willing to slide in and fight Crawford, and we talked about that, and that's badass. What the heck's going on with Big Red? We love Canelo. <laughs> we all do. From a fighter's point of view, is the stances he's taking, are they justified? Or despite everything he accomplished, should he still be fighting Benavides and Crawford? Because that's what the fans in history seems to want. You know, I believe that no matter what Canelo, Saul Canelo does, he's done so much, really, in the sport of boxing thus far. He is the face of boxing, and whether people like it or not. So he faces Benavides. Let's say he faces Benavides. He does what he has to do with Benavides. People are always going to say, well, he didn't fight Crawford. Then he goes and faces Crawford. He does what he does with Crawford. Well, he didn't fight this guy, or he didn't fight that guy. Uh, and so, obviously, Canelo understands his his line of work. He understands his career. And the guy is basically saying, I do whatever I want because I've earned that. You know, however, is it an eye candy look for all the fight fans around the world? Maybe not, but... There's a point in time where you go from a want to a need, and the guy just needs to just stay active. That's really it. Whoever he faces, people are still going to sit down and watch him. You know, um, maybe maybe those fights will happen. When we, I'm not taking that away. You know, those are great oppositions. Those are great fights. Those are mega, mega fights for the sport of boxing. It's a great look for us. You know, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, boxing is dying. I'm hearing a lot of that MMA is taking over. But to this day, if you look at it on Google search, boxing is the toughest sport in the world for a reason. You know, this is not nothing that's to take lightly. So for Saul Canelo Alvarez, honestly, the guy's made over a hundred million dollars in his career. The guy could do whatever he wants. <laughs> oh, come on, Teo. You don't mean that. I mean, that's a respectful answer, but come on. Face the smoke. Give us that benefit. This is what we want. You know what? If you were in the shoes, I think you'd take the fight. But that's just me being a bullshitter right here. Okay. Sorry about that. No, it's not bullshit. I believe that, yeah, I'm I'm that guy, but we don't know what Canelo, what his deals are behind the scenes. We don't know if he's not allowed to face him, you know, behind the scenes. True. You know, that. a lot well, of people, you know, a lot of people don't know how tied in a lot of big people are into the sport of boxing. So maybe he does. I don't believe that he's scared of anybody. I mean, he faced Floyd Mayweather at 23 years young, you know? So, and that was Floyd really on his peak of, uh, in his prime, like pinnacle of his career. So imagine that, you know, I don't think that the guy is scared to face these dudes. I just believe that, you know, there's someone in the back that is um, making sure that it doesn't happen. It's well, business, look. they say. Is Hold on, I got one very quickly. Ball. I know all he has right, to go. Right. I know you got to go. Very quickly. What is the funniest or meanest thing that Bob Arum has ever said to you? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, he called me a schmuck. He was like, oh, you <laughs> schmuck. That's, what, that was, that's probably the meanest, meanest thing that he told me. Because, you know, I said, I, I talked about why not having... You know, at the time, undisputed 135 myself and then undisputed champion at that time, Josh Taylor. Well, we face each other. And and that was the, the, the come up of two time undisputed. And that was in front of Mauricio Suleiman. It was on an interview and Bob Arum on my left side. And Bob was like, you don't know what you're talking about, you schmuck. And I was like, but wait, isn't it possible to happen? And then little did we know, what was it, Jamel Charlo? who was an undisputed champion ended up fighting Saul Canelo Alvarez for the same situation, which I, I kind of found like, am I really a schmuck or I'm just ahead of the curve? So we'll see. Uh, he's been ahead of the curve for a while. June 29th, ESPN from Miami. Teofimo Lopez is back against Steve Claggett. Teo, thank you. Always a Thanks, pleasure, Teo. sir. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Don't miss the fight. June 29th in Miami. ESPN. Let's go. There it is. <laughs>